In this video, we're going to continue talking about different roles for MAVs outside of envelope generation and attenuversion. We're going to be creating a clock divider uh, using one channel of MAVs, uh, similar to the rotating clock divider over here, or any clock divider really, which just takes a fixed clock input, like the clock output from this woggle bug. And as you can see, it subdivides the clock. Now, this has convenient LED outputs. It has multiple um, outs. It's a, it's a great module, but as always, we're going to assume we don't have a dedicated one of those. All we have is a maths and our imaginations. So we're going to make maths be a clock divider similar to uh, any other standard version. So let's discuss briefly, very briefly, how that's going to work. The principle of using maths as a clock divider relies on its fundamental function on channel 1 and 4 as a slew limiter or integrator. I'm going to be talking about exactly what slew limiter and integration means in an upcoming video. I'm still just working on how to best present that information. But the short version is you're basically slowing down the response of the math circuit so that uh, you get subdivisions of an input signal. Our input signal will be this clock uh, at a given frequency f, so that's indicated by the blue curve at the top. And the red curve will indicate the response of MATHS channel 1, uh, into which this signal goes uh, to the trigger. The red curves will indicate the voltage output of MATHS channel 1, and the blue dashes represent the end of rise uh, trigger output. So every time the rise uh, concludes and it starts to fall again, MATHS will send out a trigger. And this trigger will be our new clock. So you can see that by slewing the input of this trigger pulse train, you're slowing down the response of math so that it's basically missing pulses. And that's the fundamental concept of math as a clock divider, is you're missing pulses because you've slowed down the response of the system. And by increasing the rise time, you'll be able to slow down the response to have further subdivisions. So you could have uh, clock frequency divided by 2, divided by 3, divided by 4, etc., and you'll have to kind of find those by feel, which we, we'll see when we patch this up. So now we're back at the patch, and fundamentally we're going to be using, like I mentioned, the clock output from the Woggle Bug, uh, which is a steady output, to drive two signals. One will be the baseline signal, where we will be able to hear the original clock tempo, and the other will be the divided signal, so we're able to hear and count our subdivisions. So first we'll set up the baseline signal, and for that, I'm going to take the clock output and go to a multiple that I always have off screen down here. I should probably get some form of stacking cables at some point here. In any case, we're going to be taking the clock output here, sending it to a multiple, and the first thing I'm going to do is send it to the strike input on the DPO. So I like using the strike input for these demonstrations because it gives you a nice, clean, uh, short burst of sound, uh, which can be useful, and it's just less cables on the screen. We're also going to take the stepped random voltage output from the woggle bug, and we're going to send that to the pitch or one volt per octave input on oscillator B of the DPO. And that's just so we get a sequence that we can hear as opposed to just steady drones. So now all we're going to do is send that to the mod to mix. The mod to mix uh, will be monitoring both of those outputs. So we'll take the final output of the DPO, go to channel 2, and that sounds like this. So I have it set up for kind of a nasally tone, just so we can uh, hear the sine wave, which is a bit fatter, uh, in addition to that. So next, the divided chain will go something like this. We're going to take the sine wave output, we're going to go to the mod mix, which is going to act as a VCA. Channel 4 of this MAS will be generating the envelope for the mod mix, and channel 1 will be our clock divider. So let's get the sine wave output to the mod mix. So if we just turn that up, you can hear that. And then we're going to take the channel 4 output put that in so that's quiet and all that's left is to we're going to self patch maths to go from the end of rise to the trigger input and anytime you want to use maths as a clock or or something with a steady signal you're going to be using the gate outputs probably from end of rise or end of cycle
So now all that's left with uh, rise and fall all the way down is we're going to take that clock signal that we molted out here and we're going to put that into our trigger input. So you can see right away that we have the uh, same tempo as the original sequence. So I'll turn up the uh, second channel here. So you can hear the two on top of each other. So things are happening at the same speed. So now all that's left is we're going to turn up the rise control in order to get our subdivisions. And sometimes it'll get be a bit glitchy before it picks up an even subdivision, but let's see what we get. Usually you have to turn it up pretty high, usually a little bit past noon. So let's count this out. One, two, 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 one, two. So right now we've got divided by two. So we've got every other note is getting an accent by getting the sine wave output. And that's pretty reliably a divide by two. So let's turn it up a little bit more. So now it sounds like we're dividing by three. Let's count it out. One, two, three, 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 triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. So you get that triple it or kind of six, eight accent on each count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now we've got divide by four. So we've got division by two, three, four, and as you turn it up, you can catch more of those. I like this divide by three. I think it gives it a neat, uh, a neat rhythm. So there you go. That's Maths as a clock divider. Uh, yet another tool in the toolbox of thing that Maths can do that you may not have expected. <laughs>